And five men are dead and a sixth one injured after a confrontation between two rival cartels in southern Chihuahua. Prepare yourself for spine-chilling encounters, shocking twists, and yes, sad endings. Cartels have long been a thorn in the sight of everyone, from government officials to ordinary citizens. They'll do anything to keep their power, from waging wars against the police to murdering their ops and sometimes even stars. So, today, I'll take you into the scary world of celebrities who dared to mess with the wrong cartels. Let's get to it. First, Leslie Ann Pamela Montenegro. Leslie Ann Pamela Montenegro was a renowned YouTuber and influencer entangled in a deadly game with the cartel. From her satirical commentary on corruption to her untimely demise, we will take you through the events that led to her tragic end. Montenegro, also known as Nana Pucas, rose to fame as a satirical commentator on corruption and local politics in Mexico. With her YouTube channel, Elion, she fearlessly expressed her views on the political scenario in Acapulco and Guerrero. Donning heavy makeup and a wig with bushy curly hair, Leslie's online persona Nana Pucas became a household name. Her witty and humorous approach to criticizing politicians and higher authorities quickly gained her a loyal following. Leslie's content was never meant to be harmful, but rather to shed light on the ongoing corruption and injustice in society. Apart from her opinion pieces, she also interviewed local government officials, providing a platform for them to address issues and concerns. Her distinct tone and prudence as the grandma in wigs captivated her audience, who appreciated her boldness in speaking out against the political establishment. As her popularity grew, Leslie expanded her content to cover beauty and the latest news, showcasing her versatility as a content creator. Her makeup tutorial videos and daily vlogs added a touch of variety to her channel, further solidifying her status as a prominent figure in the Mexican online community. However, Leslie Ann Pamela Montenegro's boldness in speaking out against corruption and challenging the status quo came at a price. As her popularity soared, so did the threats and harassment she faced. Leslie became a target for those who were uncomfortable with her satirical commentary on corruption and local politics. In one of her videos, Leslie made a remark about the Acapulco mayor, which, although intended as satire, could be misconstrued as offensive. This type of content, although loved by her followers, struck a nerve. With some higher-ups, Leslie's online persona, Nana Pucas, became a thorn in the side of those in power who felt exposed and ridiculed by her fearless approach. The threats escalated when banners started appearing in the streets of Acapulco, directly referencing Leslie, her husband, and others. These banners denounced a Facebook page called Denuncias Acapulco Sin Secura, where locals could report crimes and corruption. The cartel behind these threats claimed that Leslie was one of the admins of the page, further intensifying the danger she faced. Despite the mounting threats, Leslie remained steadfast in her mission to expose corruption and shed light on the truth. She continued to create content, fearlessly challenging the powerful and giving a voice to the voiceless. However, the dark dark cloud of danger loomed over her, and the consequences of her boldness would soon become tragically apparent. Tragically, the threats and harassment against Leslie Ann Pamela Montenegro escalated to a horrifying climax. On February 5th, 2018, Leslie's life was cut short in a brutal and senseless act of violence. She was at her restaurant, Tos Los Santos, in Acapulco, when two men entered and approached her and her husband. Without warning, the assailants opened fire, targeting Leslie with a barrage of bullets. In the chaos that ensued, the attackers quickly fled the scene, leaving behind a scene of devastation. Leslie suffered multiple gunshot wounds to her face and abdomen, leaving her gravely injured. Despite the efforts of medical professionals, Leslie's injuries proved fatal, and she tragically succumbed to her wounds. The news of her untimely death sent shockwaves through the online community and beyond as people grappled with the loss of a fearless voice who had dared to challenge corruption and expose the truth. The murder of Leslie Ann Pamela Montenegro raised questions about the safety of journalists, activists, and those who dared to speak out against the power. The authorities and her followers were quick to link her death to the threats and harassment she had faced, pointing to the possible involvement of the cartel she had challenged. In the aftermath of Leslie Ann Pamela Montenegro's tragic murder, the investigation into her death began. The Attorney General of Guerrero, Javier O.A., claimed that Leslie was targeted because she had obtained sensitive information about a narcotics cartel and was on the verge of exposing them. He specifically pointed to the independent Acapulco cartel, led by Jav Daniel Cante Magno, as the orchestrators of the attack. However, as the investigation unfolded, inconsistencies and doubts arose. Local journalists and crime watch organizations reached out to OA for further information and confirmation of an arrest warrant for Magno, but communication was abruptly cut off. This raised questions about the credibility of the allegations and the involvement of the cartel in Leslie's murder. The investigation also revealed that Leslie had received threats from a government official with ties to the accused cartel. However, the details surrounding this allegation were never fully fleshed out, leaving many unanswered questions. Next, Sergio Vega. 
Sergio Vega, also known as El Shaka, was not just a talented singer, but a true icon in the Mexican music industry. His involvement in the narco corrido genre made him a target for the cartels, and his defiance ultimately cost him his life. As we dive deeper into the life of Sergio Vega, it's important to understand his early beginnings and the path that led him to become a renowned celebrity in the Mexican music industry. Sergio, born on September 12, 1969, had a passion for music from a young age. Growing up in a musical family, he was exposed to various genres and instruments, which fueled his desire to pursue a music career. Sergio's journey began in the United States, where he joined his brother's musical group in Phoenix. Together, they performed at local venues, honing their skills and gaining recognition within the community. However, as with many artistic collaborations, conflicts arose between Sergio and his brother, leading to a fallout that would change the course of Sergio's career. Undeterred by the setback, Sergio decided to form his group called Los Ros del Norte. This new venture allowed him to explore his musical style and showcase his unique talent. With his captivating voice and charismatic stage presence, Sergio quickly gained a following and caught the attention of record labels. It was during this time that Sergio's involvement in the narco corrido genre began to shape his career. Narco corridos are a subgenre of traditional Mexican corrido music that tells stories about the lives and exploits of drug traffickers. These songs often glorify the criminal lifestyle, portraying drug lords as heroes and romanticizing their actions. Sergio's decision to embrace the narco corrido genre was not without controversy. While some praised his ability to capture the essence of this musical style, others criticized him for glorifying drug lords and perpetuating a dangerous narrative. However, Sergio defended his artistic choices, stating that he was merely reflecting the reality of his world. His involvement in the narco corrido genre brought Sergio both fame and notoriety. His songs resonated with audiences who were captivated by the stories he told through his music. Sergio's ability to convey emotions and paint vivid pictures with his lyrics set him apart from other artists in the industry. However, Sergio's rising popularity in the narco corrido genre also made him a target for the Mexican drug cartels. The cartels, known for their ruthless tactics and control over the drug trade, saw Sergio as a threat. His music shed light on their illicit activities and brought attention to their operations. This did not sit well with the cartels, who wanted to maintain a low profile and avoid unnecessary scrutiny. Despite the dangers that came with his involvement in the narco corrido genre, Sergio remained committed to his music and his fans. He believed that his songs reflected the reality faced by many in Mexico and that his music had the power to bring awareness to important issues. Sergio's dedication to his craft and willingness to tackle controversial topics made him a beloved figure among his fans. But the day that would forever change the course of Sergio Vega's life arrived on a fateful day as he embarked on a journey to perform at a concert in the Mexican state of Sinaloa. Sinaloa, known as a stronghold of drug cartels, was a dangerous place for anyone, let alone a celebrity like Sergio, who had become a target due to his involvement in the narco corrido genre. As Sergio made his way to the concert venue, little did he know that he was being closely watched by the eyes of the cartel. The cartels, notorious for their surveillance and intelligence networks, were always on the lookout for potential threats or individuals who could expose their operations. Sergio's popularity and his songs that shed light on their illicit activities had made him a prime target. Armed with this knowledge, Sergio took precautions to ensure his safety. He traveled with a security detail, aware of the risks that came with his fame and the enemies he had made. However, the cartels were relentless in their pursuit, and they were determined to silence Sergio once and for all. As Sergio's vehicle made its way through the streets of Sinaloa, a sense of unease hung in the air. Suddenly, armed men ambushed Sergio's vehicle, their weapons blazing with deadly intent. Chaos erupted as bullets pierced the air, shattering the tranquility of the moment. Sergio's security detail fought back, desperately trying to protect their beloved celebrity, but the attackers were relentless, their firepower overpowering. In the midst of the chaos, Sergio Vega, the beloved singer, fell victim to the ruthless violence of the Mexican drug cartels. The bullets found their mark, cutting short the life of a talented artist who had dared to challenge the status quo. Sergio's dreams, his music, and his voice were silenced in an instant, leaving behind a void that could never be filled. The news of Sergio Vega's murder sent shockwaves through the music industry and his fans around the world. The fallout from Sergio's murder was immense. The music industry mourned the loss of a talented artist, while his fans struggled to come to terms with the senseless violence that had claimed his life. The narco corrido genre, which Sergio had become synonymous with, faced increased scrutiny and criticism in the aftermath of his death. But amidst the grief and sorrow, Sergio Vega's legacy lived on. His music continued to resonate with audiences, and his story served as a cautionary tale of the dangers faced by those who dared to challenge the Mexican drug cartels. Sergio's murder was a reminder that no one, regardless of their fame or intentions, was safe in the face of such ruthless violence. El Compa Jorge
El Compa Jorge, whose real name was Jorge Hernandez, was a famous Mexican businessman and YouTuber whose life took a dangerous turn after he shared a video about being kidnapped by cartel members. Jorge began his YouTube journey as a simple vlogger, sharing his daily life and experiences with his growing audience. It all began in the early 2010s, when El Compa Jorge first started uploading videos to his YouTube channel. At the time, he was just an ordinary guy with big dreams and a desire to share his life with the world. Little did he know that his videos would soon captivate audiences and propel him to celebrity status. One of the key factors that contributed to El Compa Jorge's rise to fame was his audacious and fearless approach. He had a knack for pushing boundaries and capturing attention with his larger-than-life personality. Whether it was showcasing his luxurious cars, flaunting his expensive watches, or jetting off to exotic destinations, El Compa Jorge knew how to captivate his audience. His videos were a window into a world of opulence and excess, a lifestyle many could only dream of. From lavish parties to extravagant shopping sprees, El Compa Jorge spared no expense in creating content that would leave his viewers in awe. His charismatic presence and unapologetic display of wealth drew people in, making them feel like they were a part of his glamorous life. But it wasn't just the material possessions that made El Compa Jorge a sensation. He had a unique ability to connect with his audience on a personal level. Through his videos, he shared his thoughts, opinions, and experiences, creating a sense of intimacy that resonated with his viewers. People felt like they knew him, like he was a friend they could relate to and confide in. El Compa Jorge's content content was not without controversy, however. His extravagant displays of wealth and ostentatious lifestyle attracted both admiration and criticism. While some praised him for his success and enviable lifestyle, others accused him of promoting materialism and shallow values. But love him or hate him, there was no denying that El Compa Jorge had a magnetic presence that kept viewers coming back for more. As his subscriber count grew, so did his influence. Brands and companies began noticing El Compa Jorge's popularity and sought collaborations with him. From luxury fashion labels to high and car manufacturers, he became a sought-after influencer, endorsing products and services aligned with his image. El Compa Jorge's rise to fame was meteoric, but it was not without its challenges. As his popularity grew, so did the attention of the cartel. They saw him as a threat, a symbol of the growing influence of social media personalities. They resented his flaunting of wealth and extravagant lifestyle, viewing it as a direct challenge to their authority. Despite the threats and warnings, El Compa Jorge refused to back down. He believed that his fame and popularity would protect him from any harm. It started with subtle warning messages sent through anonymous channels, urging El Compa Jorge to tone down his content and stop attracting unwanted attention. The cartel saw his flamboyant lifestyle as a threat to their control and dominance, but El Compa Jorge, fueled by his growing fame and the adoration of his fans, refused to back down. Undeterred by the warnings, El Compa Jorge continued to push the boundaries, believing that his popularity would shield him from any harm. He saw himself as untouchable, invincible in the face of danger, but little did he know that the cartel's patience was wearing thin. The cartel Cartel's frustration grew as El Compe Jorge continued to flaunt his wealth and challenge their authority. They saw him as a symbol of the growing influence of social media personalities, a threat to their control over the region. They couldn't allow him to continue, so they kidnapped him to find out the source of his wealth. They probably thought it was drug trafficking. They grilled him for hours, but he said he wasn't into drugs. Finally, he was released, but this was the beginning of a newfound video as he released a video detailing how he was captured. In the video, Jorge recounted the terrifying moments he spent in captivity after being kidnapped by cartel members. He detailed the fear that consumed him and the desperate measures he took to survive. This video caught the attention of the cartel, who saw it as a threat to their operations and reputation. Despite the danger he had already faced, Horge continued to make cartel-related content. He delved deeper into the activities of the cartel, exposing their criminal operations and shedding light on the violence and corruption that plagued Mexico. His videos gained significant attention, both from his loyal followers and from the cartel itself. He even started talking about meeting El Chapo's son and other classified information. However, he flew too close to the sun, and on April 18, 2022, Hoy's life was tragically cut short. Armed men attacked him in front of his house and shot him ten times, leaving him dead and his case unsolved. The loss of El Compa Jorge was not only a tragedy for his family and friends, but also a stark reminder of the dangers faced by those who dared to cross paths with Mexican drug cartels. Juan Luis Lagunas Ronalds Juan Luis Lagunas Rosales, famously known as El Pirata de Culiacan, was a young YouTuber whose life took a dark turn after he made a reckless decision to insult a leader of the new generation, Jalisco Cartel. Growing up in a tough neighborhood near the infamous drug lord El Chapo Guzman, Juan was no stranger to the violence and corruption that plagued his surroundings. However, it was his online presence that would ultimately lead to his tragic demise. As Juan, Luis Lagunas Ronald entered the world of social media. Little did he know that his life was about to take an unexpected 
Pirate Turn. Lagunas, also known as El Pirata de Culiacan, quickly gained popularity for his outrageous videos showcasing excessive drinking and wild partying. His carefree attitude and larger-than-life personality resonated with viewers, propelling him to social media stardom. By the age of 17, Lagunas had amassed over a million followers on Facebook and 300,000 on Instagram. His videos, filled with daring stunts and outrageous behavior, captivated audiences and made him a sensation. Lagunas became a symbol of rebellion and living life on the edge, attracting a dedicated fan base who eagerly awaited his next outrageous escapade. Juan gained fame on YouTube by posting videos of himself consuming large amounts of alcohol and engaging in wild antics. His carefree and rebellious persona resonated with viewers and he quickly amassed a large following. His rise to fame opened doors for Lagunas, leading to appearances in music videos and promotional events. He became a recognizable face in the world of social media with his larger-than-life persona drawing both admiration and criticism. However, Lagunas's fame came at a cost. His provocative behavior caught the attention of dangerous individuals, and he unknowingly stepped into the crosshairs of one of Mexico's most feared drug lords. In a moment of recklessness, Juan Luis Lagunas Ronald made a grave mistake that would seal his tragic fate. Known for his audacious nature, Lagunas crossed a line that few dared to approach. In a video, he directed a scathing insult towards Nemesio Oseguera Cervantes, also known as El Mencho, the notorious leader of the new generation cartel of Jalisco. El Mencho, a name that struck fear into the hearts of many, was not one to be trifled with. Little did Lagunas know that his words would catch the attention of El Mencho's ruthless network of enforcers. The insult had struck a nerve, and the cartel's response was swift and merciless. Lagunas's life was now in grave danger, as he had unwittingly become a target of one of Mexico's most dangerous criminal organizations. Despite warnings to stay away from Jalisco, a stronghold of the cartel, Juan stubbornly decided to throw a party in the city on December 18, 2017. Little did he know that this act of defiance would have dire consequences. Armed men, believed to be associated with the cartel, entered the bar where the party was taking place and fatally shot Juan. While enjoying a night out at a bar in Jalisco, Lagunas's world was shattered when armed individuals stormed in, their intentions clear. In a horrifying act of violence, Lagunas was shot multiple times, his body bearing the brutal marks of at least 15 bullet wounds. The once vibrant and larger-than-life personality was silenced forever. The motive behind Lagunas's murder remains shrouded in mystery, but authorities are investigating a possible connection to the insult he directed at El Mencho. The new generation cartel of Jalisco, led by El Mencho, is known for its ruthless tactics and disregard for human life. Lagunas had inadvertently provoked the wrath of a powerful and dangerous criminal organization, paying the ultimate price for his ill-advised actions. News of El Pirata de Culiacan's death hurt all who knew him through the internet and the nation. His larger-than-life personality and rebellious antics had made him a beloved figure among his followers. His untimely demise immortalized him as a victim of the very cartel he had dared to insult. The fallout from Juan's murder was significant. The story made headlines, shining a spotlight on the dangers faced by those who recklessly challenged the power and authority of the Mexican drug cartels. Next, Ruben Ortega, aka Super Chinello. On August 31st, 2022, the world was shocked by the tragic murder of Ruben Ortega, better known as Super Chinello. Ruben was a beloved YouTuber who dedicated his channel to showcasing the vibrant culture and heritage of Mexico. With his infectious enthusiasm and captivating storytelling, he quickly became a celebrity in his own right, capturing the hearts of locals and viewers around the globe. However, his rise to fame also caught the attention of a notorious Mexican drug cartel whose power and influence extended far beyond the reaches of the law. In a country plagued by corruption and violence, Ruben's defiance and refusal to back down ultimately led to his untimely demise. To this day, the mystery surrounding Ruben Ortega's murder remains unsolved, leaving his family, friends, and fans searching for answers. Ruben Ortega, known to his fans as Super Chinello, was a force to be reckoned with in the world of YouTube. Born and raised in Mexico, Ruben had a deep love and appreciation for his country's rich culture and heritage. He saw YouTube as the perfect platform to share his passion with the world. Ruben's journey to become Becoming Super Chinello began like many other YouTubers. He started his channel with humble beginnings, uploading videos of himself exploring local markets, attending traditional festivals, and showcasing the vibrant colors and traditions of Mexican culture. His infectious enthusiasm and genuine love for his country quickly resonated with viewers, and his channel began to gain traction. What set Ruben apart from other YouTubers was his unique approach to storytelling. He had a knack for weaving together history, folklore, and personal anecdotes to create captivating narratives. Whether he was exploring ancient ruins, 
ruins, interviewing local artisans, or participating in traditional dances, Rubens' videos were a window into the soul of Mexico. His intriguing mask was also a part of his selling point. As Super Chinelo, Ruben became a celebrity in his own right. His channel grew exponentially, attracting millions of subscribers from around the globe. People were drawn to his charismatic personality, his genuine curiosity, and his ability to transport them to the heart of Mexico through his videos. But it wasn't just his entertaining content that made Ruben a beloved figure. He used his platform to highlight important social issues and promote positive change. He collaborated with local organizations to raise awareness about environmental conservation, indigenous rights, and the preservation of cultural heritage. Ruben's impact extended beyond the virtual world as he organized charity events and participated in community initiatives initiatives to make a tangible difference in the lives of those in need. Ruben's dedication to showcasing Mexican culture and heritage didn't go unnoticed. He received numerous accolades and recognition for his work, including invitations to speak at international conferences and collaborations with renowned artists and filmmakers. Super Chinelo became a symbol of pride for Mexicans worldwide, a beacon of hope for those seeking to preserve their traditions in an ever-changing world. But the place he so much sought to promote would be his undoing. Tragically, Ruben's defiance would ultimately cost him his life. On that fateful day, August 31st, 2022, Ruben was gunned down in front of his house. His wife was injured, but his four-year-old son was okay. The loss of Super Chinello was felt deeply by his fans, who mourned the loss of a true cultural ambassador. The fallout from Ruben's murder was immense. It sparked outrage and renewed calls for justice in a country where impunity often prevails. Ruben Ortega's legacy as Super Chinello lives on. His impact on showcasing Mexican culture and heritage continues to inspire others to embrace their roots and celebrate the diversity that makes Mexico so unique. Ruben's tragic death also highlighted the power of social media as a tool for change. His videos have touched the lives of millions, inspiring them to embrace their cultural heritage and celebrate the beauty of their history. In the wake of his murder, his message resonated even more deeply. Next, Sergio Gomez. In the treacherous world of Mexico's drug war, where violence and crime run rampant, the tragic story of Sergio Gomez, the lead singer of Que Paz de la Sierra, unfolds. This comprehensive YouTube video delves in the vibrant world of regional Mexican music. Sergio Gomez's journey to fame began as a young dreamer with a passion for music. Born on September 22, 1973 in Sinaloa, Gomez's talent and charisma would eventually propel him to the forefront of the music scene as the lead singer of the popular band Que Paz de la Sierra. Que Paz de la Sierra known for their infectious Duranguense music, quickly gained a strong following both in the United States and Mexico. The band's unique sound, characterized by its lively blend of drums and synthesizers, captivated audiences and set them apart from their contemporaries. But it was Gomez's powerful vocals and stage presence that truly set him apart as a rising star. With each performance, K. Paz de la Sierra's popularity soared, and Sergio Gomez became a household name in the world of regional Mexican music. His soulful voice and dynamic stage presence captured captivated audiences, leaving them craving more. The band's energetic performances and catchy tunes became the soundtrack of countless celebrations and gatherings, solidifying their status as one of the leading acts in the genre. Gomez's rise to fame was not without its challenges. The music industry can be a cutthroat and competitive, and K. Paz de la Sierra faced their fair share of obstacles. But it was Gomez's unwavering dedication and passion for his craft that propelled him forward. He poured his heart and soul into every performance, leaving a lasting impression on all who had the privilege of witnessing his talent. As the band's popularity grew, so did their opportunities. They embarked on successful tours, performing in sold-out venues across Mexico and the United States. Their music videos garnered millions of views on popular platforms, further solidifying their status as a force to be reckoned with in the music industry. But amidst the glitz and glamour of success, the dark underbelly of the music industry loomed. The rise of K. Paz de la Sierra coincided with a surge in drug-related violence in Mexico, particularly in the state of Michoacan. Cartels fought ruthlessly for control over the lucrative drug trade, leaving a trail of bloodshed and chaos in their wake. As Sergio Gomez's star continued to rise in the world of regional Mexican music, little did he know that his success would make him a target in the treacherous world of drug cartels. It was a fateful night in the western Mexican state of Michoacan when Sergio Gomez, along with two music promoters, found themselves in the clutches of armed men. The abduction took place in the early hours of Sunday, following a show that had showcased K. Paz de la Sierra's electric performance. The armed men, their faces hidden behind masks, 
seized Gomez and the promoters, leaving them at the mercy of their captors. The motives behind the abduction remained unclear, but one thing was sure. The cartels had cast their shadow over the music industry. Mikoakan, President Felipe Calderon's home state, had become a hotbed of drug-related violence as rival cartels fought for control over the lucrative drug trade routes. The state's strategic location made it a battleground for these criminal organizations, and anyone associated with fame and success became a potential pawn in their deadly game. Days turned into agonizing hours as the fate of Gomez and the promoters remained unknown. However, the hopes of a swift resolution were shattered when news broke that Gomez's lifeless body had been discovered on the outskirts of Morelia, the state capital. The gruesome details of his murder sent shockwaves throughout the nation. Magdalena Guzman, spokeswoman for Michoacan's Justice Department, confirmed that Gomez had been strangled to death. The evidence of bruises and other injuries on his body painted a grim picture of the brutality he had endured in his final moments. Speculations ran rampant as to the motives behind Gomez's murder. While Mikoakan had been plagued by drug-related violence, it remained unclear if his death was directly linked to the cartel's operations. The murder of Sergio Gomez remains shrouded in mystery, leaving us with scant information on why he met such a tragic fate. However, the brutal nature of his demise is evident from the gruesome details that emerged. The haunting discovery of Sergio Gomez's body, coupled with distressing photos, painted a grim picture of a talented vocalist from Capaz de la Sierra who had suffered a merciless and agonizing end. Examination of his body revealed disturbing signs of violence, burns, and strangulation, leaving no doubt that this was more than a mere tragedy. The injuries found on his chest, abdomen, and face, seemingly inflicted by cigarette burns, pointed towards an execution-style killing. Speculation surrounding Gomez's death quickly turned to the involvement of organized crime, as rumors swirled that a powerful criminal group had forbidden him from performing in Morelia, a city where they held sway. The circulation of Sergio Gomez's photos across Mexico and the United States, where he resided, further amplified the shock and awe surrounding his untimely demise. These graphic images documented the somber moment authorities recovered his remains from the undergrowth. The prevailing belief is that La Familia Micoacana, a notorious criminal organization, orchestrated Sergio Gomez's execution. It is speculated that this brutal act may have been triggered by his private concert performance for Los Zetas, a rival criminal group. If true, this performance could have served as a motive for the relentless attack he endured, an unfortunate end. However, through his music, Sergio Gomez lives on, reminding us of the power of art and the need to confront the challenges that threaten its existence. But his death is a reminder that these cartels are indeed genuinely despicable people. Thanks for watching. Click on the video on your screen for similar content.